Hey guys and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision video. Now guys, I have a very special guest and he's back on our channel, Mr. Sally. Hello. And we will be doing a GCSE 2024 revision series for the class of 2024. Those of you who are going to be sitting your GCSE exams in a few weeks from today. So to kick off our collab on this channel, we will begin with language paper one, question number three, number two. The top three things you must include in your upcoming language paper one exam and also the three common mistakes that you must avoid making when you're answering question number two which is the language question so to begin mr sales will start by talking about the three essential things you must mention in question number two so What's the first thing that students must include in question number two? Well, we're going to start off with tone. Now, the reason you want to start with tone is it gets you straight into what the author is doing. Their tone controls how we think or how we feel or what we predict is going to happen. Using that vocabulary puts the examiner on your side straight away. And I'm curious, before you go into number two, what's a great way to mention tone? What kind of phrasing can students use? I would actually use that word. The writer's tone is, and then you decide what the emotion is. Cynical, excited, aggressive, whatever it is, just name it. But the word tone is what's going to get you there. Amazing. Okay, so what would be the second thing? <laughs> so the next thing is, every single text that you ever read is going to be structured around contrast. So you can see us we're contrasted visually, it's really easy to see, and writers do that all the time in their descriptions, they're always trying to contrast stuff, and so you're then going to say, well, what's the effect of that contrast? Why is the writer showing us that difference? And that's easy for you to come up with an explanation, and using these words, contrast and juxtaposition, pretty much mean the same thing. You're going to get good marks for looking at the writer's techniques that way. Okay, and then what would be the final thing? And then the final thing is the examiners have gone out of their way to put in techniques that are super easy to find because there's no tiering in this exam. Everybody has to do it from grade three all the way up, even grade one all the way up. And so they're always going to have either a metaphor or a simile, probably both, to be honest, because they want features that are easy for you to write about. Okay. So find them and write about them. Okay. And the three things you must absolutely avoid doing in your question number two response, as I said, this is the language question, is number one, always avoid mentioning sentence types. Remember that language and language features mean things like, as Mr. Sally's mentioned, metaphors, similes, but also language includes literally things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, while sentence types are technically structure. The only exception is, of course, when you're considering the third bullet point, the very annoying bullet point where you're supposed to be talking about sentence forms. And what I always tend to uh, advise students to do is to mention declarative sentences. Okay, so in one of your paragraphs when you're talking about, you know, one example, which is a metaphor or there's some kind of contrast used, you then mention how that's illustrated in this declarative sentence from your quotation. Okay, uh, would you agree with that? Um, if you know what a declarative sentence is, then do it. One of the big problems that the examiner's report keeps coming up with is that students write about sentence types, but they don't know what to say about them, so they end up not getting any marks. So I've got two bits of advice. If, if you don't see a sentence type that means anything to you, don't write about it at all. The third bullet point is actually irrelevant. I know it's mad, but it is. Uh, or look for a list because you will always be able to find something sensible to say about why the list is there. It's always trying to control what we think, feel or predict and so it's going to be easy to write about. But if you can't write about a sentence type, you can still get full marks. Don't worry about it. Okay, now the second thing you must absolutely avoid in your language response, this is for paper one, is using I statements. I personally feel that saying, you know, um, I think the writer uses this language technique or that language technique, I think this is how it makes us as readers, that usually comes across as a little bit more amateurish. It comes across as a student who maybe doesn't have a very strong handle on what they're talking about. Instead of I statements, because of course you want to talk about 
how the language technique that's used impacts you as a reader, but also you want to show an awareness of the fact that there's also other readers that are reading the same thing and maybe perhaps they might be similarly impacted is we statements as well. We statements, us statements, so using plural pronouns because it includes you as well as showing an awareness that other readers might feel the same way as you, okay? So instead of saying, I think this, you could say, we as readers, blah, 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 okay? So make sure you avoid the I statements. And then the third and final thing to make sure you absolutely, totally avoid, maybe with the exception of listing, is pointless punctuation. In other words, don't mention things like full stops. Don't mention things like commas just for the sake of mentioning them, okay? Punctuation, remember, by the way, firstly, is a sentence or rather a structure point and a structure observation. But even when you're talking about structure, using very obvious and very basic punctuation like full stops, commas, that doesn't really get your examiner thinking that you have a handle of what's been written or you understand the assignment when you're reading the insert. Instead, mention what Mr. Saleh's talked about, tone, juxtaposition slash contrast, and also considering other interesting techniques like metaphors and similes. So that's really it when it comes to how to approach question number two in your upcoming GCSEs that are taking place in a few weeks. Thank you so much guys for listening and make sure you head over to Mr. Salis's channel where we're going to be going over question number three, okay? So this is the sentence structure and this question is to do with how the writer structure the text to interest us as readers. Thanks so much guys for listening. See you on my channel.